Welcome to Dollinghouse Construction. I'm Brian Dollinghouse, and I'm gonna be answering your guys' top 10 questions that we've received over the past 10 years having to do with foundation and your home. All right, this one is usually one of the big ones. So what does it actually cost to repair my home's foundation? Now, this year, the average cost of a home's foundation repair with us is about $25,000. Now, that doesn't mean like your home is gonna have $25,000 worth of work. That's the average. So we do jobs anywhere from $5,000 up to $200,000. It just kind of depends on what your home is actually experiencing and what is needed for a correct fix. So if your home doesn't need $25,000 worth of work and only needs five, we'll let you know that. And again, don't think that every job is gonna be 25,000. It just depends on what your home is experiencing and what the correct fix is gonna to be to make it right. Everybody wants to know, how much is this foundation inspection gonna cost me? So, today's your lucky day, if you're a homeowner. It's gonna be free. We do free consulting for people that call in, own their home. Uh, we wanna give you peace of mind, walk you through what signs and symptoms to look for, different things like that. Uh, real estate's gonna be a little bit different. Right now, our real estate cost uh, to do an inspection is $750. The reason for that price is because of, usually they're short notice. We gotta you know, put time and effort into a uh, full-on inspection report, different things like that to you know, pass it on to our uh, real estate friends. A common inspection time usually ranges somewhere between an hour to hour and a half, depending on the size of your home. Now, it may take a little bit longer if you have a larger home, uh, different wings, things like that, but most of your common houses can get done with an inspection, uh, floor elevations, everything like that in about an hour and a half. Uh, if you do have a crawl space or you have a raised foundation, those take a little bit longer just because we have to crawl underneath the house, uh, inspect your girder beam, your post and pads, and make sure everything's uh, standard underneath your home as well as the exterior. We do need to have access to the house because that's how we do the floor elevations. We do the floor elevations from the interior of the house. That can go relatively quickly. We can draw the perimeter of the house uh, on our art site drawing app uh, pretty quick and then we can put all the additional measurements once we get inside the house, do the floor elevations, and that way we can provide you with accurate data. Uh, we would like to get in every room just so we can provide you with the most accurate of information so that we don't have like a corner of the house or something that hasn't been measured and you don't know, but you may be experiencing sign the symptoms in that, in that room. That's the biggest reason why we want access to the entire house. But we get it, sometimes that's not able to happen and that's okay. We make accommodations with you to kind of see how the house is behaving and if we notice like different uh, slopings or readings going into that room, more than likely we're gonna tell you and let you know that this room is probably experiencing some sort of settlement as well. Just We just don't know how much and we can't have accurate or figurative data to attack. Another great question is, how do we actually measure the settlement of your home? And that one's actually pretty easy. We have a machine that does it for us. So we'll draw a sketch uh, or a floor plan of your entire house. From there, we'll take a machine, it's called a manometer or an altimeter. And what it'll actually do is give us 
uh, floor readings, a digital floor reading, and a number based on a high or low from a centralized focal point. So we'll have a focal point kind of probably in the center of your house, and then it'll give us a reading of high or low from that point. Again, it goes pretty quick. We always want to do at least three to four measurements in a room just so we have accurate data and make sure we don't miss anything. So that is how we actually measure your floor elevation is with a machine. So it'll provide a numerical value of how much your house has settled or if your house hasn't settled at all. It'll tell us that as well. So engineering standards is an inch of settlement over 20 feet or a half inch over 10. That's what we use. So if you experience it more than that, more likely you're starting to experience some sort of foundation settlement and we want to be able to repair that. Now the readings we utilize because we want to make sure that we're able to lift your home back into a uh, level or to those readings. So we take readings before and after we get done doing a lift just so we have accurate data and that we know that your house is level to where it was. So if a company doesn't provide you with floor elevation reading, but they supply you with a proposal for work, I would strongly recommend you ask for them. So that way you have the factual data of knowing exactly how much your house has settled and how much you can expect for recovery. I know a lot of companies do not provide that to the homeowners. I don't know why, uh, but we do. So you will get a floor elevation survey. You will know exactly the amount of settlement your home's experiencing or how much it's not moving. And we give that to you because it's your home. We want you to be as knowledgeable about your home as we are about your home. Because at the end of the day, we want you to make the right decision and right fix for your home. And if there's not a problem with your home, you need to know that as well, because it's your money, it's your home. Why dump money into something that doesn't need to be fixed? Ooh, this question's fun. Do we go in your crawl space? The answer is yes. Do we want to be in your crawl space? Probably not. Do you want to be in your crawl space? Probably not. Uh, crawl spaces are typically not the cleanest place. Uh, usually a lot of spiders, uh, all sorts of things hang out down there. Um, you would be surprised what we find. But at the end of the day, it's part of our job. We want to make sure we do a thorough inspection for you. So we do go in there. Sometimes we will recommend to you if it is too bad or we see certain things um, to get it fumigated or have pest control, different things like that come out prior to us going in there just for our health and safety. Um, backstory, I ran into one a couple years ago, saw a snake skin at the front entrance of the crawl space, did not go in there. Told the homeowner I need to have you have animal control come out, take a look, and make sure there is no snakes in there. I hate snakes. And <laughs> definitely don't need to be in a crawl space with one. So that is why uh, we make sure our safety of our employees is top notch, but then also we want to make sure we still get in there and give you a thorough inspection. So yes, we will go in your crawl space. So to code, 18 inches is going to be your standard height for a crawl space. Now do we see crawl spaces 18 inches every day? We do not. So back in the day when a lot of these houses that were built back in the 50s and 60s, uh, there wasn't the same crawl space height requirements as there is now. We see crawl spaces you know, anywhere from 10 inches to 12 inches, uh, up to like 30 inches. We love 30 inch crawl spaces. 
But at the end of the day, the way the house was built back in the days is not up to the same standards as it is today, which doesn't mean your house isn't bad. It just means that we can't get in there to do the work or the inspection. So we do require 18 inches and again, code requirements to repair any of your home's crawl space issues. I would love to have a crystal ball and tell you a set number, but I can't. Now, the reason why is because there's a lot of other outside factors that we can't control. That being your city. So after you start the process with us, usually you'll call in, uh, you'll talk to one of our associates and project specialists. They'll kind of guide you through the process, set up your inspection with you. And that usually takes about a week to two weeks. After the inspection's done, and you go ahead and sign the proposal for the work to be completed, we then start the engineering process. Engineering takes about two weeks as well. So now we're up to four weeks, depending on how quickly you sign the proposal. If you take two weeks, three weeks to sign the proposal, again, it's gonna get stretched out. Once the proposal signed, engineering's done, then we can go ahead and submit everything to the city for a permit. Now this is where it gets fun. City permits can take anywhere from two weeks to a year. Right now, what we're seeing for an average city review time is about three to four months. And that's with us staying on top of it, everything like that. We have a dedicated person in our office, on our staff, that does nothing but deals with cities and permits and engineering and things like that. To streamline your guys' process, to kind of cut down as much time as we can. So again, that section right there is the bulk of the time that it's gonna take from start to finish. So once we receive a permit and your plan is ready to go, we can then put you on the schedule. Now, our schedule backlog is typically anywhere from four weeks to about eight weeks. So we'll put you on the schedule, we'll come out there, do the work, and this is where it gets you. Our work that we're gonna to do to fix your home usually only takes about one to two weeks. And I know one to two weeks worth of work for X number of months worth of waiting, but that's the way the game is played right now in California and Arizona. So again, a lot of stuff that we can't control with the cities and reviews and engineering and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of stuff we can, we try to like to said to streamline it as much as we can, have a dedicated person, stay on touch on top of what is and is going on with the reviews and plan checks and things like that and we update you as we go along in the process so long story short the entire process can take about six months to probably complete by the time you do every every one of those steps so just don't think when you click on you start this process that you're gonna have your home fixed next week it's just not that simple I wish it was and that's where we're at and that's the best timeline that I can give you from our experience with it. If you have any additional questions that we haven't been able to answer in this video, by all means, click the Get Started button or give us a call at the office. We'd be glad to answer any additional questions that you may have or go ahead and schedule your free foundation inspection to get you rolling, to get you the answers you need. Thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully it answers a lot of your questions. And we always remind you to never settle for subpar work and subpar answers.